Let's remember what General Colin Powell said, which is there is no secret to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, discipline, and learning from failure. Typical Atwater approach, let's focus on our why. Our why is to um, focus on the Caymanian way of sharing, of giving back, and of making Cayman better. And we would inspire them to pursue excellence and instill in them a sense of pride in who they are. Georgetown, the annex, that, that was a key drawing card. It was mostly uh, a, a, an old boys club, you know, I mean it was the older guys, you know, once you hit you know, 18, 20, um, if you could play, you got in, and if you couldn't play, sorry, you left out. Those um, trials from trying to fit in and make the team and earn a spot and winning and learn how to win and learn the camaraderie, all of those things I, I attribute to exactly why um, we're all successful as men. We have, we have scarred each other and, we have, and we, have, we have definitely loved each other. Arts and Recreation Center has helped our standard of basketball improve immensely. Our players feel much safer. Moving here in 2009 has surely enhanced our player development. Improve our competition and encourage more supporters to attend games. Our players have an outstanding facility to display their skills. More families participate in the activities in a clean, safe, wholesome environment. And with that support, our game has grown from strength to strength. Teamwork is a core value of the DART organization. Our team plays its part in supporting youth sports. By providing access to international standard facilities and developing programs that will inspire youth for the future. Georgetown Central, if you weren't from there, you really didn't know how to play basketball. You know, everybody had to come in to learn how to play and then hope that you got in. We all was out here playing, playing basketball. It was really, really good, really competitive. There was a lot of people who loved that community part of basketball. And by, you know, Georgetown, the annex, that, that was a key drawing card. This playing surface looks great in comparison to what people like Ove and Monty used to play on. You know, we don't know how we survive, but you know, <laughs> thank God we, we, we survive. And you know, let's say even on that court over there, right, this is the evidence of <laughs> one, of my, one of my scrapes here. And I went to the middle school and found a court that was already marked out, been there for three years, nobody had ever used it. Um, found out that there was uh, basketball hoops in storage at the Public Works. So I spoke to the principal, got permission 
to um, speak to Public Works, got them to put up the, the basketball hoops, got permission to start an after-school program, um, which I didn't did. I mean, I started um, an after-school program for kids that didn't know how to play basketball. And that's when I just you know, decided at that point, um, somebody needs to teach these guys how to play at a younger age than what I had you know, been forced to do. The seniors, actually for a very long period of time, did not like Tony and myself because we took the funding that we got from the government to run the junior program and basically said, yeah, we're going to give you guys a little bit, but you can make it on your own. You don't need very much, but we need money to develop these kids. The whole idea at the time was to try to get the youngsters more involved in the sports. I took over from Mr. Jonah Jefferson, who was the president of the Basketball Association at those times, and I tried to build on what he had him and his members have done in previous years, you know, so I, some of my whole thought at the time was to try to develop the sports and try to get people involved, you know, the youngsters more involved with the sports. He, he asked me about being involved in basketball. So I said, yeah, but, you know, I'd just given up football and to become involved, so pleaded. Plus he had other youngsters with him, and of course, um, Mr. Parchment, he also was involved at that time. Because Shamari was involved, Tony was involved. Because anything that his ch children were doing as far as sports, he got involved with. He's one of those type of parents. And um, we then looked at the Basketball Association and said, it's not helping the youth. Everything that they do, the money that they get from, from the government, is just really made to keep the, the programs, the senior programs going. So Tony and I decided that we were going to get involved in, in, in the um, executive part of it. And we looked at it and we said, one, two, three, four, five, we're going to go in and we did. We, we made a complete swap of everything. So because we figured that for, for any sport to really survive and thrive, you have to set a foundation, and the foundation would be with the youngsters. I was excited about it because basketball was almost non-existent. It was just building here. I think it was an opportunity to build the sport from the inception, from the roots up, and I was very excited about the opportunity. This is a Get nice focus. shirt. This, you designed it, or what? Yeah. This is yeah, nice, though. I like this boy. Arts and Recreation Center has helped our standard of basketball improve immensely. Our players feel much safer. Moving here in 2009 has surely enhanced our player development, improved our competition and encouraged more supporters to attend games. Our players have an outstanding facility to display their skills. More families participate in the activities in a clean, safe, wholesome environment. And with that support, our game has grown from strength to strength. Teamwork is a core value of the DART organization. Our team plays its part in supporting youth sports. By providing access to international standard facilities and developing programs that will inspire youth for the future. I was excited about it because basketball was almost non-existent. It was just building here. I think it was an opportunity to build the sport from the inception, from the roots up, and I was very excited about the opportunity. There were 10 guys, 
and um, I wanted 12 because we had to play Jamaica in two months time and Jamaica were accustomed coming beating Cayman and going back so I got two guys who were footballers which were Gary McLaughlin, Gary McLaughlin was butcher and Luigi no, Luigi said he can play, but when they give him the ball to take a layup, he almost punctured the backboard, you hit that hard. But his willingness and determination to want to participate made me select him. Cutting a long story short, he became one of the better players because of his dedication. Shamari was a bit controlling because uh, Shamari was the only one with a basketball. Okay, so it was like, you know, his rules, is his rules at the time. And he was a big Magic Johnson fan, so he was probably one of the best players out there, if not the best. There were rivalries between districts, even within school. But when you got on the basketball court, then you got to know that even if this person was from West Bay, Georgetown, Bodentown, it didn't matter, we were all Caymanians. And outside of the basketball court, then we would talk to each other and actually help to squash some of the district rivalries, even within a school context at that time. We, we were always losing to Jamaica, and afterwards, after virtually a few months of training, intensive training, Jamaica came in, but we didn't, we didn't beat them here. At that time, it was at the Lions Center. We got an indoor facility, and that was my most memorable time. And that had to have been the, the greatest uh, moment for me was actually beating Jamaica um, on our home court of, Ly of the Lions Center. And moving forward, Coach Wood has just taken it to the next level. I was voted for Prime Minister after that tournament. And I mean, the headline was Wood Ogawa for Prime Minister. I can never forget that headline because we have never, you have never beaten Jamaica before. And here we are going to play them a three-game tournament and they know it was just business as usual, beat Cayman and go back. And they were shocked, they lost three straight. So the, it was an actual turning point in Cayman's basketball history. But those, those um, trials from trying to fit in and make the team and earn a spot and winning and learn how to win, and learn the camaraderie, all of those things, I, I attribute to exactly why um, we're all successful as men. You know, our, our business and our social um, community roles have our direct relation to what Coach Voot and I would, and, and Mr. Scott, because those guys were there with us in the dorm rooms, on the sidelines, in the locker rooms, making sure that we were not just prepared for basketball, but prepared how to play together and win. And a few times we had to, you know, take some bitter losses as well. The most important things were, were hard work and discipline. Those, those are, they go hand in hand. Um, and you can play that across the board, whether it's your studies, whether it's your work environment, whether it's um, spending time with your family. Um, those are lessons that we learned. And obviously we had a, a great teacher in Coach Voot. I mean, Coach Voot was like a second father to, to all of us. And he was able to impart a lot of his knowledge uh, with us growing up as, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old young men. We were winning everywhere that we went. The small little Cayman Cam Cam Islands against Israel, India, the States, Canada, the US. I mean, you know, so we were all confident. There's so many people in the background, Mr. Mr. Um, Dalton Butler as well. So many people that really helped us mature as young men to allow us to have the discipline to be um, respect have respect for our community, our fellow citizens, and that's where my pride comes from for Cayman. It's directly related to um, representing Cayman and traveling the world. 23 out of 24 went on to get college degrees and we're all successful in our own way. And I think it was the actual basketball that helped us, helped to guide us and helped us to become better people. Like even in the work um, force, it's, it's interesting when you see dynamics, not even within my organization, but dynamics where persons are thinking about the interest of self and not team. And guys who are played on teams in a work context can't really understand and comprehend why somebody would want to take all the credit or why somebody would want to have a silo, understanding that it takes us all in order to achieve. We have so many talented people here in Cayman that they have those opportunities, but it's, it's, it, they don't understand the balance of, of making sure you, you, you put in your school work and, you, and you're following your coach's instructions and um, the discipline that it takes.
Arts and Recreation Center has helped our standard of basketball improve immensely. Our players feel much safer. Moving here in 2009 has surely enhanced our player development. Improve our competition and encourage more supporters to attend games. Our players have an outstanding facility to display their skills. More families participate in the activities in a clean, safe, wholesome environment. And with that support, our game has grown from strength to strength. Teamwork is a core value of the DART organization. Our team plays its part in supporting youth sports. By providing access to international standard facilities and developing programs that will inspire youth for the future. Fidelity has the tools you need to make getting and staying out of debt simple. Our debt consolidation loans have built-in saving plans that earn 5% interest. Our coaches will give you a financial plan that will help control spending and guide you through those tricky times. Even our credit cards are designed to control spending while giving you the power to save with cash back and built-in saving options. See, at Fidelity, we make things simple. Fidelity, we're good for you. You know, I didn't know anything about dribbling, but I just used my netball skills. And um, obviously I was very athletic. The guys would invite me to come out, the people like Nick Smith and, and the Loxley and CI, Cecil Wal Walton, and I would go down and scrimmage with them. And then one day they said, well, how about you playing with us? And I thought, well, is that possible? And Tony Scott was very comfortable with that, and they encouraged me. I feel very proud um, and I'm happy that I'm making the persons who um, influenced my decision to be involved in officiating um, proud. Like for example, I'd definitely say thanks to Edward Ebanks. Um, he was very instrumental in encouraging me to try officiating because he felt that I, as a player, I paid special attention to the rules itself and understanding. He's like, well, why don't you try to referee? And I went ahead doing that and um, it just feels good. I think we'll get some professionals um, in the NBA and certainly in Europe. We do have a few already in the UK um, who are playing, but I think that as it progresses and we see these kids develop and they're learning more, not just on the court, but they're understanding the craft itself, like understanding the rules, um, it's going to improve. Coaching these young girls is just like Oh my gosh, now I know how my coach felt. Because when they excel or when they do something good, you're like, I taught them that. <laughs> so so it's, like the, it's like the best feeling in the world. And um, being coached by Redver and it, it, like him getting me into college and going to college level playing basketball, it, it's just like I see now what the coaches feel. And I just want the girls to excel as I did. And I just want them to, to just love the game and love the sport as much as I do. At the time, we never really had a lot of people contributing to the sport as far as helping us. It was pretty much just Coach Root at the time. Um, but now we have a lot, of, a lot of our girls went either off to college to play ball or they all went off to college. So we have a very high graduation rate as far as college graduates that played on that national team that we played on in about 1997. Um, almost everybody has a college degree right now and they're contributing to the sport in some way or the other, whether they're coaching youth leagues or participating in the women's leagues um, or just sitting on the association committee. We're starting to try and grab the youth from a lot earlier. Um, we didn't have that advantage to play from say five, six, seven years old, but now these kids are starting to learn fundamentals from very early, so we're gonna have some very, really, really good players coming up from, from um, the development from very young. We wanna develop the kids overall. It's not just trying to find who's gonna play college ball or professional ball, it's just develop, developing them as young people, getting them involved in the right things and out of the wrong things. One of the things I, I realized by going to college is that you know when I compared the women's uh, the women athletes in the Cayman Islands compared to a lot of the, the athletes in the, in the United States I was like you know hey we have women that have you know you know the same equal or even better 
you know, in, in terms of um, athletic. athletic ability, you know. So, you know, that's one of the things that I wanted to tap into. I thought and I, I believe that in the Cayman Islands, women have a better chance of actually making it to the world stage um, in team sports than men would. So you'd have that structure that could that could really touch young people and teach them the right values and the right ethics, and that's that's where I wanted to get involved. But the sport didn't really have the um, the governance, the structure that that it needed to have to to be effective. And I also recognize that in order for uh, the sport to to really touch young people to to be successful, we needed to expand the pool of coaches, we need to expand the pool of referees. When I left basketball, we had over 34 coaches that had been through our level one uh, certification program. Over nine had been through FIBA, FIBA level two. Uh, we had developed our own uh, certification program for, for, for our coaches. Same thing with, with referees, we had developed our own certification program. You know, we really tapped in to the funding that was available from, uh, from the CIOC, from Olympic Solidarity, and we used that to develop our coaches and our, our referees. And, and subsequently, once we had the coaches, we then started implementing our, our youth, youth programs, our community programs through, through a government, government grant. So with, with that foundation, um, you know, I, I feel confident that we're well placed to develop young people, which in turn will lead to real success as we go forward. As a teenager, none of us who started out with our original team ended up getting a basketball scholarship, per se. But we all went on to get you know, our undergraduate studies. Um, but nowadays, you'll see that we have 10 or 15 kids already overseas, either in high school or in college. And that's the direction that we want it to go. Uh, we feel that by getting a chance to get an education, and, but using basketball as a tool to get that way, that these people will become productive citizens in the country. And hopefully, you know, down the line, perhaps they might get a chance to play professionally and then also give back to the community. So we're really working hard to get these kids a, young, a chance to uh, get an education and better themselves. I'm excited about where it is and where it's going because the, we, we have at present children playing from every, every strata. We have primary school number at age 12 and under, we have under 14, we have under 16, we have under 19, we have seniors, all, all male and female separately. So we have quite a nucleus. Recently, I took a team to Mexico last year. And I was not afraid because under 15 means that you have no players to bring from the States. So I went to the central basket and came in, and came in fifth. And I know if my girls had not problems with the breathing in Mexico, we were going to qualify to go to the other level. Because at that under 15 level, we already have programs in place where the other Caribbean countries struggle for that. Let's remember what General Colin Powell said, which is there is no secret to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, discipline, and learning from failure. Typical Atwater approach, let's focus on our why. Our why is to um, focus on the Caymanian way of sharing, of giving back, and of making Cayman better. And we would inspire them to pursue excellence and instill in them a sense of pride in who they are.